Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Been a bit of a hiatus since uh, since our last video. We haven't been really doing much. Had the little girl in uh, just right before Thanksgiving, so haven't been out riding. Haven't really been doing too much. Um, but we have some exciting stuff going on today. We have some EHS parts that we got. Um, the Airbox mod we'll be doing. We're going to install an EHS tuner, the AIS delete, all that fun stuff. Um, but first things first, I need to go ahead and get my coffee because <laughs> it's a bit chilly out there in the garage. So we're going to do that. And then uh, old man's going to come down, give me a hand, be my extra set of hands and uh, cameraman as well. So um, we're going to wait for him. We'll go out, start getting things ready, and uh, we'll be back with you in a little bit. So we're going to be working on the Grizzly today. We're going to be putting all these parts on the Grizzly. Um, EHS, we got our air filter. We have the air box lid that we have to cut the air, top of the air box, put that on. We have the tuner, and then we have this little AIS delete plug we're going to install and then the rest of the little stuff for the air intake um, <clears throat> fun story we actually the old man he was riding that 2005 red honda rancher um, 400 but that was getting to be a little too too rough straight axle and no power steering was a little bit laboring um, and it just it just wasn't fun for him anymore. So sold that actually got more than what we paid for it two years ago and Searched around for a little while found a Kodiak on Facebook marketplace It was a 2021 and it had 48 miles on it. So went up and snatched that right up because it was a great price and uh, When he bought that the guy that had it had actually bought all this EHS, the tuner, the airbox mod, everything for that Kodiak, um, but never installed it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these parts on a Grizzly because uh, I think they'll be better suited for that. I could use a little bit more power gain with it. Um, I mean, it's a great quad, a reliable quad, awesome. Has plenty of power, but there's been a couple times I'll be going up hills and I just want just a little bit more power. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Probably going to do something in the form of an exhaust here soon. Now that I have the tuner, um, it's not too much of a, too much of a big investment to do an exhaust. Um, Cause usually when you, when you get an exhaust, you also have to do a tuner along with it just for fuel to air ratios. Um, but now that I already have the tuner and that didn't essentially cost me anything, um, I'm probably going to do an exhaust here soon. I don't know if I'm going to just do it, it's going to be one of two things. It's going to be either that MBRP, because I know that I've seen that on Grizzlies before, and I know it's not too, too loud. I don't want anything crazy loud. It's a utility quad. It ain't no sport quad that I need crackling through the woods. I just want a little bit deeper tone. Um, so it's either going to be the MBRP or just the 2R tip. Um, I kind of like the thoughts of the 2R tip because it's so easy to take on and off that, you know, when I'm riding in different areas where I don't want the noise like up at our cabin or something like that. I have the option to just four bolts, pop it off, pop the stock to, or pop the stock tip back in there, change the tuner around and I'll be on my way nice and quiet. So not sure what I'm gonna do there yet. I have a couple months to decide before riding season actually starts, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and start with this. Um, like I said, we're just waiting on the old man. He should be coming down a driveway on his bear any minute. So we'll be back with you in a sec. So while we're waiting for the old man to get here, um, wanted to pop on here and just let you guys know a couple updates. Um, number one, I inherited a GoPro Hero 3 from a buddy of mine that it was just laying around. He didn't, he didn't use it anymore, so he got, just went ahead and gave it to me. Um, I'm getting that all wired up for both the wife's helmet and also the old man's helmet. Um, so we should have two views here soon on, on really any future video. Um, we should have cameras. I'll have a camera on and then whoever's following me, I'll have a camera on. 
Um, not 100% sure what the quality of the Hero 3 is. I know the sound's good, because um, I hooked it up to my helmet. Not sure about the video quality, but I guess we will see. I believe it, it doesn't have as good of vibration control or whatever it may be that um, the Hero 8 that I'm using now does. So, um, but I think it's still high def. I think it still shoots in 1080. So we, we will see. I'm shooting 1080 on the Hero 8 as well. So um, I think it's 30 frames per second as opposed to 60 that I'm shooting here. But I, I don't know that you'll notice much of a difference, but we'll see. Uh, there's only one way to guess and check if it's that bad. Um, I mean, at this point, I have everything wired up. Probably end up just trying to find a newer GoPro um, on Marketplace or something like that if that ends up being the case that the quality is that bad. Um, but I don't foresee the Hero 3 to be a, the, to be a problem, and uh, it should definitely help our videos. Also, recently got a drone. It's not, it's not the best drone, I'll be honest. It's, I'm definitely a beginner when it comes to flying drones, so I didn't want to go ahead and spend $1,000 on a drone. Um, but I got one like half off. It was, it's like a $500 drone. Um, once again, quality's not 100% great. I'm not <laughs> really that great at flying it yet, but uh, hopefully by the time I start shooting videos, we uh, will have some better control of it and uh, we can get some cool views in there for you because I know that's really cool to see on some of the videos I watch, you know, seeing people ride up to a, a big lookout and then seeing a drone go up and see, you know, how high they really are or what's around them. It's, it's, yeah, I think it's, I think it's one of the coolest things. Um, so that's something we had to look forward to as well. Here he comes. Like I said, I don't even think this thing has 50 miles on it yet. I think the only thing he's done since since he brought it home was back and forth to my house, which is about an eighth mile. So <laughs> Alright, first thing we gotta do, pop off the seat. We gotta take off top plastic. This we gotta take off the air box. Um, so I'm going to do a little time lapse and we'll just do that. You gotta cut this part off right in front of this ring. Yeah, he did that on a, he had a bandsaw. Well, it looked like they didn't cut into this, they just kind of, yep, there you go. Peeled it out. Yep. Now, did the foam come with the kit? Yes, it did. Okay. Yeah, I have everything that they had in the kit. Like doors. What do you think, Ope? The first, I guess. Aluminum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. So that's when you gotta drill your holes. Hope it fits nice and tight. And how do you mark the holes? I guess you mark them and then drill from this side. Like it was higher on theirs. Yeah, you kind of have to. What he wants, what he really, really wants. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I got the sawzall out, man, and just hacked that pipe off. That's all right. I'm sure it looks a lot better. Yeah, the pipe was ugly. Yeah, it was. Do you really need to do all four corners? Yeah, it makes it easier to make the corner. And now we got a hole in the workbench. We'll patch that on the next video. <laughs> Oh, that does fit fairly tight. Yep, it'll be fine once you yep. put the rubber on there. Yep. Notice how all the tools are DeWalt. You bet. Nothing but the best. <laughs> okay, that's that. It is some pretty stuff. Straight, too. Straight. It's straight ish. Straight enough. Okay, now the bottom part. That's the hard part. Mm. All you're really doing is cutting the lip off. Right. So. I'll step outside from now on. Screw that out right shit. Okay. No, I definitely All right. just don't need it. So that's done. Now we're gonna get back in here. So AIS delete. Little, uh, our little AIS condom. Mm. Slip it on here. And that's it. Like, they didn't even plug this side of the hose. They did, I think, just for show. So I'll do that, but I mean, I don't even think it's necessary. That's not going to go in there. <laughs> it's It needs to be a little harder. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> this bolt back in here that holds the air box in on the passenger side is absolutely terrible to get to to put back on take off this electrical take off your belt breather and then i actually used a different bolt one because i dropped it and couldn't find it but used a bolt that i could actually hold with the box and actually get it that in there and do it because that was rough i'm gonna put this stuff back together and then uh I guess we'll work on the tuner next because most of this is just about done. Long, long time. That's a nice tight fit. It's a cheese set. Put the lid on too. Huh? How, how, how hard's the fuel control? Wait, you gotta wire. It's, it's literally, you just unplug something and plug it back in. Mm. It's easy. And then you're ready to go. Yeah. Really? Granted, it runs. Hmm. All right, last part, fuel controller. Here we go. So yeah, this is just, you unplug this right here. Your injector. You plug it into here. And then you plug this into here. And then we have to find a ground for this. See what happens. Fire it up. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah.
All right, y'all, so sorry for skipping over the reassembly, but um, really wasn't much to it. it was just putting everything back together. I blew a couple fuses and <clears throat> had a little bit of trouble rerunning wires, but um, after that, uh, after that, what, what I, what it's almost a hidden bolt on the airbox that I got, that I showed you guys. Um, once I finally got that in, I was a little frustrated, I'd have to say. And, uh, I just wanted to put some tunes on and get the thing back together so I could go test this out. But, um, I just got back from a little rip in the woods on this and I will say, holy cow, did this thing wake up. It almost feels like this bear was in hibernation for the first 1200 miles I drove it because my goodness gracious that tuner and that airbox mod did freaking wonders I can't wait to do something with this exhaust um, whether like I said it's an MBRP or the um, <clears throat> or just a 2R tip whatever it may be that'll probably even do more but I got that tuner installed I put in the settings exactly as the instructions said to do with a stock airbox, or I'm sorry, a stock exhaust and the airbox mod. And as soon as I got those settings in, it started running great. And like I said, I took it down to woods and holy cow. I mean, this thing, I couldn't keep traction. Um, it has a little bit more of a roar to it, a little bit more of a growl. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit louder. Sounds like it's coming from the airbox, just sucking in more air, but, um, it just, I, I could definitely notice the power gain right off the bat. So definitely good stuff there. Um, I will show you under the seat, the air box. Um, sorry, it's a little dirty. I just realized um, should dry off in there, but there's the new air box installed. And then I have under here, the tuner. And then this is just my heated grip controller, but there's my tuner set to the right settings. And, uh, I think it turned out pretty well. I'm real happy with it. Um, like I said, exhaust is coming soon. 